Hello again everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, I want to give credit to a channel in my subscriptions called Twice Diecast. He has a cool collection of uh, models of like all the limousines and big rides that like foreign diplomats and dignitaries would use. I'm going to copy you twice and uh, make a collection of my own of these uh, giant vehicles, these land barges that, you know, politicians and dictators and stuff sadly uh, use. So this is by Hobby Japan and uh, this brand is alright. I feel like they're lacking in value compared to NO64 and LCD, but they're still pretty nice models. So what we're looking at here is the Toyota Century, as there you go, and in particular is the chassis code UWG60 in Eternal Black. I've seen comments on other channels, you know, thanking people to pre-open packages. I could do that, but I'm not going to because I want to actually look at these with my own eyes for the first time. If I pre-open them, I feel like I'm be compelled to actually modify them <laughs> or, or fix any problems. So I want to see all the problems or all the glory er, that comes out of this thing when it's brand new. All right, so this oh, this one's tighter than usual. Okay, so I start it there. I'll put it down. There we go. The Toyota Century was uh, first introduced in 1967, and the name comes out about because it was the 100th birthday of the founder of Toyota, Sakichi Toyota, with a D. I'm not sure why. The name is a D, but the car is a T, Toyota, instead of Toyota. If anyone knows the story behind that, that would be a great comment for everyone, I think. Okay, so this is the third generation of the Century. And I think this is like the most prestigious car coming out of Japan. It's generally, I think, only sold in Japan as well. This thing is supposed to cost two, 20 million yen, which I think is around $200,000. They're almost all handmade, apparently, according to Wikipedia. I could be wrong. Uh, maybe 50 of them are made a month. And then uh, it doesn't have a Toyota badge at all. It has something called a Fushiko badge, which I guess is common in uh, Japan. The rear seats have a reclining feature, and then uh, there's a hybrid, in this generation, a hybrid 5 liter V8, making 425 horsepower. Okay, so this is an interesting compilation of photos I found. Uh, I think it looks like the photos, in part, I mean, that's that's spot on, right? That's Even the license plate matches, so that's pretty nice, okay. Going back to the front again. Yeah, okay. Here's a side view. Let's we'll see if the general proportions look right. Hobby of Japan, pretty impressive. Uh, doesn't look too far off to me. Okay, well, let's take a closer look with the dental pick here. If I could find it. Here we are. So, I don't really like uh, glossy black. I would have much rather had a blue or that maroon that we saw in the photographs, but uh, I don't know if, I'm assuming Hobby Japan very soon will come out with those colors, but I'm just too impatient. And there is something about a gloss black on a big limousine type vehicle. It's very regal, very, uh, and or very CIA kind of looking, right? Presidential limousine kind of thing. All right, well, let's see here. We got some wheels, of course, and they're very, very quantity, quant, uh, what am I going for? A lot of spokes in common English. I was trying to get fancy with my vocabulary, but I failed. Um, this is not a dent. This is, I think, is a carryover of the bumper parting line. So, well, let's make sure. Yeah, it's part of the bumper, see? So it's not a, it's not a problem for the, in the casting, it's by choice. There's some silver paint here running around. Nice. Uh, chromed plastic around the whole bottom perimeter. Very shiny. So I apologize if my ugly face is in any of those reflections. Mm, let's see, we have some door handles sticking out, painted silver. Chrome again around those windows. And there's some sort of badge there. Let's see what that looks like. Well, it's not the greatest. 
or it's not very legible. It seems like a little bit of gold on blue. Maybe that's a Fushiko thing that I read about. Or maybe it's this. Yeah, I think this is it. It's like a phoenix of some sort. That's a really stylized phoenix, but... Um, is it this way, this way, this way? I almost feel like it's like that. Although I don't really know. Maybe it's... Well, I'm not sure the orientation. But it's nice to see there's a graphic here in the middle of the uh, wheel. You know, first it's painted black, and then they printed the gold on top of it. So that's nice. Mm, I don't know if there's a brake system. Oh, actually, I think you can see a round object back there. See? All right, well, this is a, the tell. You know, this tab is a brake, and it stays in place while the wheel spins. So decent texture on the, uh, the tire there. This is another four times magnification, by the way, or it was, and I didn't. See, I don't see any flaws. Pretty impressive, actually. The mirrors. Uh, Hobby Japan always has a reflective sticker in their mirrors, so you can't get better than that. It's quite awesome. Front end. Yeah, it's nice. I like it. Not as classy as a roller, Rolls Royce. You know, not as tall, but a pretty prominent grill there. Great to see Century on the license plate, and then again, you got this. Uh, Golden Phoenix Peacock. All right, so that is the orientation. Very stylized. Some uh, ribs there, painted black. These lights, LED lights, are not painted at all. It's a really thin strip. The headlights have a clear lens, and then behind it is some silver paint there. So that looks all right. Some depth to the light bucket. And then there's that logo. Oh, that's a different one. It's a C. Or, yeah, I would have to imagine it's a C. It's called a Sentry, right? As to why there's more than a C, I don't know what that other stuff is, but uh, interesting. Okay. Under four times magnification, seems like this paint is not the best, and or there looks like scratches in the casting, almost like a Hot Wheels. But, uh, well, you know, I can't actually see it with the naked eye now that I'm specifically looking for it. Most people probably wouldn't notice that because I'm guessing most people don't use a, a camera at four times magnification to look at their models, but sorry if I pointed out that flaw. Uh, I'm okay with it though. It's still a pretty good stellar looking model. This side, the only difference would be the fuel filler door there. Any problems here? Mm, little extra plastic there, it seems. Mm, nothing major, looks all right. Going to the back here, Sentry is printed very nice. Again, nice license plate, that golden thing. And then the taillights are really good because there's a little silver paint going around those clear lenses. So, if I had to guess, this is probably all one clear piece of red plastic and then they painted the black in the middle and then they painted the silver, but look how thin this silver is. So that's really good, really nice. And then again, super chrome thing. All right, well, going to the bottom. We got some dual mufflers, unfortunately. Well, is this my choice? You see how this is angled? These are like parallel, but that way? I don't know. You would think that they'd be parallel with the rest of the car. But, you know, since I've never seen the bottom of this, maybe this is correct. Please leave a comment if you know, or if you're actually motivated to look at the bottom of a vehicle but on images. Anyways, uh, I think all Hobby Japans are screwed together, which is great, so you can uh, customize or fix problems. And then uh, a lot of details molded in. But I also noticed that Hobby Japan doesn't actually write what the car is, which isn't good for posterity or education. Right? Some kid is going to pick this up and be like, oh, that's a black car. And that's all they know. Because there's no Toyota badge on there. They know it's a Century. I guess that's all they would know. So, it seems like a wasted opportunity. You know, if you're going to take the time to make a mold, why wouldn't you just put more text in it? Right? They feel like their name is important, but they don't feel that the car is important. That's just me. Sorry. Okay, well, the interior, I think, would be next, but unfortunately, in the past, they don't ever add any extra color, but, oh, look at this. They did add an extra color. All right, so, we got some brown on the doors. That's what I'm seeing there. 
oh, brown in the middle on the back seats there. So a little wood inlay. But the dashboard, I don't see any extra gauges or silver or anything like that on the buttons or dials. So, well, it's better than usual. The other Hobby Japans I have are just plain black all around. There is a mirror hanging as well. Sorry, this is, that was too bright. 15 lumens here now. Uh, I'm just trying to see if the mirror actually has a reflective sticker. I can't tell. There's a little too much distortion in the, the molded windows. Well, anyways, it's nice to see the shape. And I do like that uh, Hobby Japan doesn't try to put those uh, defroster lines on because very often they're just too big and distracting. So I like this. This is a cool dignitary's vehicle. It doesn't want to roll. It rolls, obviously, but not like a Hot Wheels. There's too much friction, I think, with the brake system. It's also a very light car, considering how big it is. I mean, it's a plastic base, but even with this giant casting, it, it feels light. Well, all right. That's not so important to the appearance, anyways. I, I would... This is too nice to roll down a Hot Wheels track, right? So... Let's take a look at some other large vehicles made by other companies. Uh, I pulled up this image here behind because I think it would be cool if someone made the older Toyota Centuries. You know, this is an older generation. And then I wouldn't actually be opposed to getting a modified one. You know, these guys are, this is lowered. It's a limousine, it's actually extended. I think a limousine of this would be nice. That might be a little bit too over the top, but uh, this one and this one I think are cool. I would definitely buy those if someone made those uh, into 164 scale models. All right, let's get back to this thing. Try to get in the center, try to focus on that one. Okay, so I have a TLV. It's a Toyo, Toyo Pet Crown MS50. Uh, it's just a normal sedan, obviously. So it gives an idea. Granted, it's from a different gen, different time. But I believe the Crown is considered a full-size vehicle from Toyota. Okay. Uh, another one would be a Bentley Mulzan. This is made by Kyosho. So now I can see people cross-shopping this. The Mulzan is actually larger. I think the Mulzan is the flagship of the Bentley lineup. Correct me if I'm wrong. But it's a nice model by Kyosho, except for the price. It's it doesn't have any additional color in the interior, and it doesn't it didn't come with any reflectivity in the mirrors. I actually added chrome paint in the mirrors of this thing, so Kyosho is kind of cheaping out there compared to this, which at least has some brown and some reflective stickers in the mirrors. Okay, let's get this guy out. So now we have a Phantom Seven. I don't know. I think it's just a random no-name brand, you know, it's unlicensed, so it's one of those things that just pops up and then vanishes and then comes back under a different brand name and stuff. But I gotta say, it's a great model still. I mean, it's got all the details on the outside, but also look at that brown interior with the black steering wheel and uh, this wood inlays and the dash. So that's a fantastic model. It's actually one of the reasons why I started collecting this uh, scale of vehicles. I saw this at a store and I'm like, whoa, I didn't even know people made 64 scale models of Rolls Royces, at least the modern ones. And so that's why I bought this one. So that start, helps start this journey of uh, reviewing these things. So thank you, no name brand. All right, the last one I'm going to pull out is made by uh, GCD. It's the Mercedes Pullman 600, and it has a little steering wheel function there. The st front wheels do steer. And uh, unfortunately, the GCD is not actually very accurate. I just bought it because it was on sale on a website. I forget which website. But the grill of this thing is not accurate to real Mercedes. So there's a couple other brands making this uh, same type of vehicle. And you probably want to buy one of those over this GCD. But I do like the GCD in the fact that it has that light tan interior. Right? So... And it's got the sunroof so you can get a little light in there and see what's going on on the inside. Okay, so, you know, unfortunately the Century looks a little bit small next to some limousines. 
Henceforth, it would be cool to have like a limousine version of this. Maybe it wouldn't be made by Hobby Japan, although one would think that they would be the best candidate. But, uh, well, we'll have to see what, ha what the future holds for the 164 scale Toyota Centuries. So at the end of the day, uh, I'm pretty happy. Uh, no, it's very rare to have a perfect model, especially at this price range. But uh, at this price range, this is a pretty cool model. It's it's, it's really nice. So, uh, darn it, twice diecast. I'm gonna start collecting these uh, limousine slash presidential or emperor type of vehicles. I am noticing this mirror is jacked up. It's pointed up at the sky. But anyways, so we'll have to see uh, in the future what other kind of diplomatic vehicles I get. Maybe I'll call it the Diplomats and Dictators uh, line of videos. Alright, until that happens, I'll see you around. Thank you.